My father is a man for whom the word mild manners fits very well. I have never seen him angry or upset. Just a few minutes ago, he was laughing with me as he always does. And he was happy about my marriage. But he said, I don't approve of it. This engagement is broken. Get out. You, stay away from my daughter. The moment he saw my fiancé, he yelled at him as if he had changed. The words that came out of my father's mouth were unbelievable. My name is Diana. I am a 30-year-old office worker. I rent a room near my parents' house and live alone. Thanks for your hard work, Dad. I called out to my father, who is the manager of a nearby supermarket, on my way home from work. The building is a little old, but the store is well-loved by the local residents. Diana, I didn't know you were on your way home. Good job today. I smiled at my father, who spoke to me with a kind smile. I'm bragging about my family a bit, but I think one of the reasons why this store is so loved is because my father's personality. When I was a student, I was a bit of a rebel. I would be cocky with my parents and say to them, That's enough. Leave me alone. I was always saying like this, Who do you think you are? Even so, my father would say, Dad loves you, Diana. So it's impossible for me to leave you alone. He always had a smile on his face. As I grew up, I was getting married to Noel, who I had been in a relationship with for a long time. Noel is three years older than me, and I met him through a friend. He's a kind person who likes to surprise me and send me presents on ordinary days. He's a very fun person to be with. Above all, his smile is a little like my father's. Noel gave me a proposal ring with our initials on it. It was a little big, so I am going to have it sized on my day off. When I showed the picture of the ring to my parents, that said, It looks good on you. I will miss you, but be happy. I'm sorry I haven't been able to make time for you due to my work schedule. I'm looking forward to meeting Noel. I had never even shown them a picture of Noel because I felt embarrassed about it. Last week, I visited Noel's parents' house to say hello. His father was a taciturn man, and his mother was talking by herself. Most of it was about Noel. My son has always been kind to me, and Diana, you are a lucky girl. There's no better man than him. And don't worry, he has a good plan for your life, and has enough money saved. Oh, and by the way, I was completely overwhelmed by her blubbering. Hey, you've bothered Diana enough, right? You can stop bragging about your son now. My father-in-law stopped her and finally quieted down. I felt that he was a very powerful man, but I thought we would get along well. When I got engaged, my friends gathered to celebrate. One of my friends said, Hey, did you bring the ring? Let me see it. Yes, okay. I haven't been able to get it sized yet. Ta-da! I showed her the whole thing. Oh, huh, that ring, huh? The surprising remark made me want to walk away right then and there. The day came when Noel came to my parents' house to meet them, but I had an uneasy feeling in my heart. Noel lives in the next town over and was supposed to meet me at my house before heading to my parents' house. However, I had to go to my parents' house first because I had received a call from work, and I felt uncomfortable. I waited for Noel's arrival with my parents. As I prepared coffee with my mother in the kitchen, she said to me, Your father doesn't seem to be in good spirits. I heard that one of our friends is going to close his store again. We have to work hard at our store too. My mother gave a small sigh. A few of my father's friends also owned watch and general stores, and they encouraged each other to do well despite the economic downturn. My father seemed frustrated at his friends who still had to close their store. Look, honey, if you greet Noah with a face like that, he will be worried. Smile, like you always do. Yes, today is a memorable, unimportant day in our family. 
Well, Diana is getting married. Our family laughed at my father, who was already on the verge of tears. Then the intercom rang and I rushed to the front door. I opened the door to find Noel standing there. Welcome, Noel. What's with the big paper bag? Did you notice? I heard that your father likes to drink, so I brought a lot of things for him. And some snacks and other things. I laughed a bit bitterly at the random items in the bag. Are these supposed to be souvenirs? When I went to Noel's parents' house, I brought some sweets from a local confectionery. I thought that was the way it was supposed to be. I was a little upset when I received the paper bag. Thank you. I'll show you my parents. Then we went to the living room. Nice to meet you. Thank you for allowing me to have a relationship with your daughter. Noel greeted my parents in a loud voice. I'm Diana's mother. Thank you for coming today. My mother greeted him with a smile. But then... Come. My father, who had been laughing with my mother and me just a few minutes before, now turned red and glared at Noel with an angry face. What? What's wrong with you? You just got here. You're being rude to Noel. My mother approached my father and tried to smile. You mean, you don't approve of this marriage? My father suddenly stood up at my words. Of course, I won't approve. This engagement is broken. Get out. Get out of my house and stay away from my daughter. My father was furious, and Noel didn't seem to understand what was going on. Did I do something to offend you? I think I just met you for the first time today. Noel seemed too frustrated. I've never met you in person before, but I know your face very well. What's in the big paper bag? What in the world do you have in there? My father's low voice echoed in the living room. Diana told me that you like to drink, so I bought it at a liquor store nearby. With Noah laughing, my father immediately started to make a phone call. Hello. Good evening. Check the inventory right now. We may have some damage. After he finished calling a few places, my father glared at him again. I was still clueless as to what my father was calling about. But Noel's face was pale. I have one question for you. I run a supermarket near here. I get all kinds of customers. I'm sure you can tell me what kind of customers is the most unforgivable. My father said to him without hesitation. Oh, uh, a uh, supermarket? Oh, uh, well, uh... Noel was shaken that he could not even speak properly. You really don't get it. Then let me tell you. It's a shoplifter. Both my mother and I were very surprised and upset when my father raised his voice. Bill's going to close down his watch store, right? That's because of poor business performance caused by shoplifting. Foster's general store is the same. Some small stores in small towns are honestly just doing business out of the goodness of their hearts. Tell me something. How could you do such a terrible thing? My father stared at him with a complicated expression that was both of frustration and sadness. What are you talking about? Shoplifting and whatnot. I bought this property. If you say anything more stupid, I'm getting out. He said, threatening my father. The police came to our store a few days ago. They said he seems to be stealing from a small, privately owned store. The police are not stupid. They analyzed the security cameras in the neighborhood and showed us pictures. It was unmistakably you. And in a criminal's hand was a large paper bag that looked just like that one. He pointed to the paper bag I was holding. Noel trembled and seemed about to run away. Get out of the way, old woman! He said to my mother, who was standing near the entrance, and pushed her away. Oh, what the hell? The next thing I knew, my mother grabbed him and he was being thrown in the air. My mother is actually a martial artist. Noel didn't know what had happened, looked down on it, and then suddenly started crying. You're wrong. It was just on a whim. There are a lot of them, and I didn't think it would make any difference. 
If I stored a few? I didn't know that the supermarket was your father's store. Please, forgive me. I beg you. Please just don't call the police. I don't want Diana to be the wife of a criminal. I was horrified that Noel still intended to marry me under these circumstances. I'm gonna be your wife? Are you out of your mind? Do you know what you're going through right now? You're disgusting. I never want to see your face again. I was getting emotional. Huh? What are you talking about? The watches and photo frames I've given you as gifts. And what else? Most of them are stolen things. You've been benefiting from them until now. You were an accomplice too. Noel laughed, completely revealing his true self. This ring. I heard you were nervous about buying it when you proposed. I don't know much about it, but this ring seemed to be a model from a few years ago. Actually, it was at a party, and my friend was drunk. Huh. But this ring is a design that was sold quite a while ago. I think it's discontinued now. I was so embarrassed and confused that I wanted to leave immediately. I still didn't know what to ask Noel. I guess Noel thought he would lead me into a trap. Look, you don't want to be an accomplice. So please, pretend that you didn't notice what happened today. Your father wouldn't want the world to know that his precious daughter was with a criminal, would he? With sweat on his forehead, he continued to say these words as if he was negotiating with our family. What the hell have you been saying all this time? And don't call me father when you're not even married. I'm telling you, the police are here. It's only a matter of time before you get caught. And my daughter is not as weak as you think she is. Don't you dare make fun of her. My mother's grip tightened on Noel as my father shouted angrily. Ow! That hurts, old lady! He started to lash out violently, but my mother was no match for him. I was so frustrated that I took out my phone and said, Hello? Is this the police? Someone is acting up in my house and has attacked my mother. There's also some stolen property. Can you please come right away? I was surprised at how calmly I spoke. On a contrary, Noel was in tears. Selling your fiancé to the police? What a woman you are! I gave you all kinds of gifts because I thought you would be happy. Oh, that's why this is all your fault. He shifted the blame on me. <laughs> what? Don't be silly. I can't stop shaking to think that I almost became the wife of such a horrible person. Your parents must be devastated. As soon as I mentioned his parents, Noel's jaw fell open and he seemed to have lost his strength. The police soon arrived and took Noel away. My mother had a big bruise on her side and I cried and apologized to her. I was so glad you weren't hurt. She laughed at me. Noel seemed to have given up and agreed to be interrogated. I was also interviewed by the police as I was engaged at the time. I learned from the police that Noel had been stealing from multiple stores for a long time, just as my father had said. It is surprising that even he does not remember the other crimes. It is said that his arrest was just a matter of time. Most of the stolen goods were sold on the internet and the proceeds were used as living expenses. Noel was a man who did not drink, smoke, or gamble. But if I may say so, he was a bit finicky about money. His hobby was saving money. And he said he liked to see the amount of money in his bank book increasing day by day. The reason for his theft was trivial. When he was packing bags after shopping at a supermarket, he saw an item that someone else had forgotten. He was supposed to tell the store and hand it over, but instead, he quietly put it in his own bag. The feeling of satisfaction and elation he felt at the moment was unforgettable, and he repeated the theft. The initial feeling of guilt soon disappeared. He felt superior to others. The goods in the paper bag he handed me were all stolen. The liquor was stolen from a nearby liquor store and the sweets from my father's store. 
Even though I had not told Noel the location of my father's store, he would be the only one who would do something like stealing things to make as a gift. The ring he sent me appeared to have been purchased over the internet. To think that he went to the trouble of looking for a new unused item with his initials on it, I was beyond saddened. I went to see Noel in jail only once since then. He seemed to think that I had come to see him because I still had feelings for him. I knew you would come. I knew that you were the only one for me. My father and mother are both heartless people, and they told me they were cutting me off. Yes. How about you get me a good lawyer? I'll pay for the lawyer, of course. When I get out of here, let's have a nice wedding. Of course. I have no love for the man in front of me, who was smiling without any remorse. There was only disgust. I don't understand what you're getting at. I'm here today to demand compensation for breaking off the engagement. Noel's face turned red as I coldly told him that. Huh? Alimony? What nonsense! You've got to be kidding me! I'll never pay it. You're the one who broke off the engagement, so you are the one who should pay me alimony. He started ranting. I have no idea what he was thinking, but I was sure that I would never marry this man in the future. Why can't you understand that even a child knows that it is wrong to take something that belongs to someone else? I don't get you at all. There are many people in the world whose lives are changed drastically because of a selfish person like you. Your father and mother were crying when they came to our house to apologize. They were so exhausted. I honestly felt bad seeing them. A few days after Noel was taken away, his parents visited our house. Both of them looked pale and gaunt compared to when I had met them before. Noel's mother, in particular, could barely stand. We're very sorry for the trouble our son has caused you. They had originally planned to hold a dinner party for both of our families a few weeks later, but now both of our parents were meeting each other in this way. Everyone there was sure to have mixed feelings. The two of you have done nothing wrong. Noel is the only one to blame. He's an adult now, so he should take responsibility. Noel's mother broke down in tears at my words. I'm ashamed of myself for saying I'm proud of my son. He was such a fool of a son for causing so much trouble to others. Besides, I heard your mother was injured. How can I apologize to her? It's only a scratch. Don't worry. I think my daughter was hurt more deeply than I was. We can't forgive your son for what he did. But as my daughter has just said, he should take responsibility. At my mother's words, Noel's parents cried all the way until they left the house. Noel's father was nearing his 60th birthday, but he retired early because of this incident. Noel's parents decided to move to the countryside, where they would not be seen by many people, not to avoid publicity, but to recuperate from the mental and physical exhaustion of dealing with this incident. Well, I'm going home. I stood up. Wait a minute. Are you abandoning me too? Noel cheerfully said to me. What do you mean abandoning you? I have nothing to do with you anymore. Your actions have betrayed everyone who believed in you. Don't ever appear in front of me again. Noel did not say anything back to me as I coldly told him off. He was later suspected of having a history of theft, but this was never diagnosed. He was also sentenced to prison for injuring my mother. His sentence seems to be short. But he has no one to turn to when he gets out. His life after his release from prison will be very difficult and lonely. Noel's case was reported in the local news. Until a short while ago, I had been elated by the thought of marrying without knowing anything. My colleagues and friends treated me as if I were a tumor. I am sure I would have done the same if I were in the same position. I felt uncomfortable and decided to resign from the company. And help my father run the store. My father must have been very happy because he remodeled the store and enlarged the sales floor. In the new sales area, he put in a watch store and a general store owned by a friend of his. People who used to be regulars at these stores would stop by. 
They started shopping at the supermarket while their watches were being repaired. My father also looks very happy to be working with his friends. Once they were interviewed on TV, sales started to increase even more. Two years later, I had a chance to marry an employee of the store. This time, it was with my father's blessing. I wish I could say to my past self, who was depressed back then, Your future is very bright and happy. With these thoughts in mind, I will continue to live in this town.